Hello, greetings everyone, and welcome back to the Base Blast Audio Tech YouTube channel. And in this video, we're switching it up. We're back to the car audio stuff. This is an old school, eh, early 2000s, I believe. Not quite 90s, but come on, it's 2019. This thing's almost 20 years old. I think it's earned its old school badge by now. This is a, 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 a Snockford Schnozgate, Rockford Fosgate Punch, 325.1 monoblock. It's a 325 watts by one at 2 ohms. 175 by one at four ohms. Now, it's pretty simple to get into one of these things. Just get an Allen key. I forget which size. Move the four hexes here in the corner, and this top comes off. You're gonna want to be careful. You're gonna want to do this connector to um, this LED board off. Now, this amplifier actually works flawlessly. There's nothing wrong with it. What doesn't work is none of the lights on the front work. Power, thermal, protect. They're all out. But as you can see, I've had it wired up and it, it works fine. I used to have it in my truck until I upgraded to a Punch 300.1 P300 P312. Jesus Christ. But this is um, one of these funny designs. It's a normal class AB, but it uses MOSFETs instead of BJTs. I do not know how Class AB MOSFET amps work. In theory, they're the same as a BJT Class AB, but if you actually look at a reference design, they are vastly different. Let's take a little peek inside this thing just to see what's in here. So all car amps are the same. This is going to be our step-up transformer. These two FETs here, these are more than likely going to be our switching FETs. They are, they go to the transformer. They come to these. These are our rectifier diodes. Here's our filter caps. We got a pair of Lelon 3300 mic 50 volt. Now, here we have some voltage regulators. Oh, cool. Okay. We have an on semiconductor LM317. Then we have a, a Fairchild LM337. That's the negative version of the 317. Then we have two FETs. So these are Fair, Fairchild 36P15s. And then Let's adjust the cams a little bit. We have two more. These are both Fairchild 28N15s. All right, so, yeah, so this is our positive. This is going to be our um, P channel and N channel. So yeah, class AB, it'd be a, a push-pull because these are our emitter resistors. I can tell that right away. 0.1 ohm looked to be about 3 watts. But this is not what we're after because this thing actually works great. I'm going to do some basic tests. I'm just going to diode test with my meter, these LEDs, and see if they light. Hey, they're even uh, color-coded. Okay, well, it's backwards, but the protect light's on. It's yellow. Thermal, yep. Power. I don't think our power light, our power LED works. Hmm. Let's flip it in case it's backwards. Okay, we're getting... Let's try to do that. Okay, so this way... That's open. Okay, so we're going to the yellow light, which works because we just tested it. Okay, nothing that way. Alright. Okay, yellow's on. Red's on. Power is not, but the meter is showing a voltage drop across it. Now let's flip it. Nothing, and we're still getting a voltage drop. I think that LED has shorted. What's this resistor value? 800 ohms. 790, 791. Hmm. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do a Google search, see if we can find a quick schematic for this thing. That's from 2006. And so, um, Googling any technical info on this amp was a complete waste of time. There's literally nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. So what I think I'm going to try doing is, even though I'm pretty sure the LED is shorted, I'm just going to resolder it, and then try it again. But, I don't think there's enough slack in this cable. I was going to plug it in, have the unit on, 
and see if I get voltage here. Because if I do and it doesn't light, that pretty much confirms that LED is shorted. Now to find one to replace it with, because I do not have any blue LEDs. I'm pretty sure I don't. Hmm. I have orange and blinding clear. I do have some blue, but they're the wrong shape. A bunch of these uh, rectangle type ones. Green. Oh, those are five millimeters though. What the hell is I doing with five millimeter green LEDs? Could probably make it work though. Hmm. So I uh, just removed it. I didn't bother to resolder it. And so yeah, this LED is completely open both ways on the meter. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so yeah, I figure I'll just stick a new LED in it. Of what kind, I'm not sure. That is a very small hole. I could use one of these big green ones. I mean, it's a 5 mil, but... You know, these type of LEDs, they act like a projector. Let's say if I get it lined up in there... That hole is too small. I could probably make that hole bigger. It should shine right through it. Okay, so I just hacked in a 5 mil green. We're going to pull the amp over here. And plug it in. Give it some power and see if it lights. This thing's heavy. I bet you this, yeah, I actually know for a fact this aluminum costs more than, you know, the bomb cost of materials in this whole amplifier. Oh, there's just enough left. Attach our remote lead. Ha! There you go. The blue LED was no good. I would just take this board out and make the hole slightly bigger. However, um, this board is taped to the front. And I don't I don't feel like trying to uh, realign it. Although, I do have some of that real nice 3M double-sided tape. So if I look at it at an angle, it's taped in the corners. And so I actually could re-glue this because it's probably not on there that tight. Oh, Christ. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not in the corners. It's got two strips. Go all the way down. Oh, even better. So it's got the tape strip that goes all the way down. Well, it's got holes punched in it so the lights could go through. Kind of obvious, but... Yeah, sure enough. Okay. Even this is heavy. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the knockoff Dremel with a kind of circle bit. I'm going to see if I can drill um, kind of like a countersink so the ball will fit in it a little nicer. What would work? I think it's something like this. Should work pretty good. Now the fun part, bend the leads, I'll probably solder this down, then I'll probably uh, coat it with like, I don't know, just like hot glue or something. Fuck it, cut the lead off too short, just get another one. I'm just going to make it easier. I'm just going to solder to that uh, dropper resistor. Now the fun part, bending this down so I can get it to the negative post. And this is when I melt the side of the LED, but that shouldn't matter because everything's coming out of the front. Oh, of course it's not going to stick now. There we go. Have to see how I did that there. There's our negative side. And then our positive side just loops over here onto the dropper resistor. So now let's bring the amp back over. Focus. Plug it in. And see how well that comes out to the front.
and I just checked that bigger LED sticking out is not going to um, interfere with anything. So let's grab our stuff again, plug it in, and see how our now green power light looks. Power on. Yeah, let's just let's kill the light and make it look a little better. Attach our remote. Oh, there we go. You can't even tell that's a new light because it fills the whole circle. Would you look at that? Cool. I guess now I'll probably pull the hot glue gun out to um as a stress relief for the LED. We'll screw this back down and this will be done. And there we go. It doesn't really look that good, but I took a nice bead of hot glue went all the way around the bottom of it. This axe is almost like a shock absorber. Should be fixed now. So now let's put it back together. Because even though it's a mono block, I can switch it from low pass, subwoofer, all pass, which is just full range, or high pass. So which means if I had like four of these, I could hook these up to a bunch of 8 inch mid ranges and have a sound competition vehicle. And also, like most car amps, you know, it's a mono block, it's got. Ouch! Ow, ow, ow! I just stuck my hand on the glue gun on the side of my bed, which was still hot. But it's got um, two speaker outputs, but they're just connected in parallel. So I have my two 4 ohm bench speakers hooked it up. So this amp has a 2 ohm load on it. And my power supply does not like it. Because if I turn the gain up just a little too much, as you'll hear. That is my power supply having a seizure. At about 10 and a half amps, it goes into shutdown. Guys, there you go. Here's a quick video fixing the lights on the Rockford Fosgate Punch P325.1. If you like the video, as usual, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. But as always, I'll see you guys if I whack the camera tripod again. See you guys in my next video. Bye for now.